Good afternoon. May peace be upon you. How are you today? Today's lesson is lesson 20. So we are going to talk about how teachers should plan a lesson when they are teaching. So let us understand what is the meaning of a lesson. Lesson is a short duration in which a teacher is going to teach something or facilitate teaching of something. Commonly no names for the lesson are lecture, practical, small group discussion, bedside teaching session, even tutorial, seminar, bedside teaching, teaching in operation theatre, teaching in the ward, these all are sessions. It is a period of learning or a period of teaching. From the perspective of teacher, it is a period of teaching in a session. From the perspective of student, it is a period of learning that is a session. We are today concentrating about is how a teacher should teach in a period. Robert Gunn, an amazing man, he is known as the father of instructional design, also called as conditions of learning or nine steps of learning. Instruction is teaching. Robert Gunn was a psychologist, an educational psychologist. And interestingly, in Second World War, he was in Air Force Corps and he was teaching, uh, teaching the pilots how to fly. Since he was a teacher at that time, he observed this thing. In a lesson, there are certain conditions. And if these conditions are met, then the pilots learn in a much better way. So he is crystallized into his thought, into an instructional design consisting of steps, which are nine. So that is what's also called as nine steps of learning. Robert Gunny's nine steps of instructions. Let me show you a video. It is going to bring to your awareness the nine steps in the form of a schema, in the form of a video clip, so that you can remember it in a much better way. In common with many other species, humans pass knowledge from one individual to another. This behavior is ancient, probably instinctive, and like most human behavior, could be improved with critical reflection and deliberate practice. In the 1960s, Robert Gagne took the time to identify what he called the nine steps of instruction. Although this list is attributed to Gagne, I like to think that the steps themselves have probably been present since we began passing knowledge on. And this is the story of how it could have worked since the beginning of time. Son, come over to the fire. I have something to say to you. What is it, Dad? I'm kind of busy over here. Step one, gain attention. This is not as obvious as it might seem. If you intimidate your audience, they won't listen to you. But if you aren't assertive enough, your audience will think you don't believe your message is important, and so why should they? Before you can get people to pay attention on the cognitive level, it's a good idea to engage them at the physical and or emotional levels first. A joke, a story, a challenge are all good ways to do this. Son, you should come and listen to me because I will teach you how to make your family proud and how to fill your belly with mastodon meat. Great, now that I have your attention, I want to tell you that it's time you learn to hunt. You need to eat your family needs to eat, and we're hunters, 
not farmers. Step two, state the objective. This is an important step for both the learner and the instructor, maybe especially for the instructor. If the instructor can't explain the point of the lesson, it isn't reasonable to expect the learner to figure it out. Do you remember when you followed us out on the hunting trip last month? You watched us take down that mastodon. Do you remember the courage and the skill of the hunters? Did you see how important it was for each one of us to have those skills so we could work together? Step three, <coughs> stimulate recall. This is the stage where you help the learner connect the new information to what they might already know, either from previous lessons or from other life experiences. A great hunter needs a brave heart and good spear technique. I can't give you a brave heart, but I can teach you how to use a spear. Now that you've laid the groundwork and created the context, it's time to present the information you think the learner needs to master, which could look something like this. There are nearly infinite ways to present information. How you choose to do it will depend on the needs of your audience and the available resources. Okay, son, now that you have the idea, why don't we go out in the backyard and try a few practice throws? Before you set the learner loose to apply the information, it's a good idea to offer some guided practice. You don't want to take over and do all the work, but on the other hand, you don't want to abandon the learner. You want your guidance to be clear, specific, and relevant, so the learner can benefit from your knowledge while internalizing the skill. Great, I think you're ready. Let's go hunt some Mastodon. Now is the time you let the learner loose with the information. This is what you've been working towards. There he is. Remember what I showed you. Keep your spear up. Exactly. Keep your eye on the target. Aim for the heart. Feedback needs to happen in as timely a way as possible and in the amount needed too soon or too much, and it could inhibit the learner's performance. Too late or not enough, and the learner could become discouraged or lose interest, or get eaten by the mastodon. Well done, son. Excellent first hunt. Your technique was perfect. I'm very proud of you. Our family will eat for weeks. Assessment is an important indicator to learners about whether they are on the right track to achieve the objective. If the objective was clearly stated, both the learner and the instructor will have a clear idea of what success should look like. The assessment should be relevant to the outcome. Praise is good when warranted. Critical analysis is needed when execution falls short of objectives. Good work, son. Next month, we'll talk tiger. If the instruction has been successful, the learner will be able to take ownership of the knowledge and apply it in new and more challenging contexts. In comp This video I have downloaded from YouTube, an excellent video. In this video, there are three domains of learning, knowledge, skill, and attitude. You must have realized, in this he has applied the design of learning on nine steps of Ghanese on skill domain of learning, which was throwing a spear for the purpose of hunting. But the same can be applied in knowledge domain of learning, in cases of uh, skill domain of learning, and in cases of attitude domain of learning. Let's proceed further. So first event is gain attention. You can call it steps, you can call it events. But event is better. Because in the original article, 
Gandhi has mentioned the word event and not steps, if you look both the history. Gain attention. So therefore, you gain attention, you present the stimulus to ensure reception of instructions. Because we know this thing, attention is the mental energy which is required to process the information and to put the information into the long-term memory. So if there is no attention, no learning is going to occur. And there are many ways, as you were realizing in the clip, attention can be gained by resorting distractions, video audio clips, stories, anecdotes, and so on and so forth. Once an attention has been gained, then the next step is state outcomes, which is the second event. Tell the learner the learning objective. That is, at the end of this session, you will be able to do what? What will the pupil gain from this instruction, from this lesson in which I am teaching? For example, I am this, I have gained attention by showing you video, imprinted slides, and today now I am stating the outcome, and the outcome is that you would be learning Gane's nine steps of instruction. Third event very important is stimulate recall. Ask for recall of existing relevant knowledge. Establish and it established previous knowledge to provide foundation on which the learner can work. This is based on the educational theories or paradigms or orientations of cognitivism and constructivism. And all information which is gained, it is built upon the previous information which a student has. A student constructs his new knowledge on the previous knowledge and putting new information onto it. So therefore, if I ask you what information you have or what do you recall, what even should be there in the lesson, then you would be recalling some if you are in the practice of teaching. Somebody might say attention, other might say we must tell them what they want to teach and then teach and so on and so forth. Present stimulus means display the content or give the information. Give new information to build on the foundation of existing knowledge, like I was talking before. Now it all depends upon your lesson is addressing knowledge domain of learning, skill domain of learning, or attitude domain of learning. Obviously, if it's a knowledge, if it's a knowledge domain of learning, and you will be telling students, you will be giving information that would be facts, concepts, and principles. Whereas, if you're going to, the lesson is pertaining to skill domain of learning, then the information which you will be giving to that, to, to them would be, for example, the material which is required to perform the skills, what are the steps of performance of skills, what, if this step does not complete, what next step is to be taken. Obviously, to perform a skill, knowledge is also involved. Now, fifth event is provide learning guidance. Guide the learning by choosing appropriate method or model of teaching, knowledge, skill, or attitude, domain of learning. For example, if we are teaching a knowledge domain and we want to teach a concept, we know there are certain models available by which one can tell the concept. The concept has definition, it has defining attributes, it has examples. Therefore, if you ask the student to generate examples, then you nudge them that they are exactly picking up the proper thing and then you ask them what are the common characteristics in them and so on and so forth. In fact, you are facilitating, you are guiding the students how to acquire knowledge. Similarly, if you want to teach skill, then there are different methods by which skill can be taught. For example, there is Python's method. So therefore, when students are, teach, are learning that, as you are teaching them, 
then you're going to guide them this is how the skill is going to be learned this is how you're learning the skill and which actually you will learn at the end very important thing is when something has been taught in a lesson then what should elicit the performance very important learn to respond to demonstrate knowledge skill and attitude which is taught to them for example if you are assessing you have taught a knowledge that it can be assessed or you can elicit the performance using tools like mcq short answer question asking a question or verbally some puzzle or something true false anything of that sort whereas obviously listening performance the best method of examining would be to listening performance would be to ask the person to demonstrate as in video he was asked to demonstrate now the important thing is that as he is doing that he is eliciting the performance you are providing feedback feedback what he is doing right what he needs to change during his performance because that is going to crack the schema in his mind and then you assess the performance as he is doing again and you continue this thing till it is reinforced into him the correct information and he remembers that give information feedback on the learner's performance more performance more feedback to reinforce inform information now once in the lastly you have assessed the performance and your assessment tells this thing that he has learned now comes the time for the last event which is the ninth event that is enhance retention and transfer so it is the duty of the teachers to provide the opportunity to apply what has been learned to other context for example if he has learned knowledge then give short answer question mcqs with different clinical scenarios in different clinical context different mcqs so that his knowledge can be transferred and he may retain he has learned a procedure on a let us say giving an injection or, or applying a cream bandage bandage on the manicure once you have finally also examined him and you know he has then send him to the ward so that we can apply the dressings on the patients just to summarize ganesh nine events of instruction gain attention state outcomes stimulate recall elicit performance sorry stimulate recall provide stimulus provide learning guidance elicit performance provide feedback assess performance enhance retention and transfer i hope this lesson helps you have a good day enjoy the life see you during the next session or next lesson